Hello, once again, I'm Connor from Advisions, and today I'm here to talk to you about macro photography. More specifically, I'm here to talk to you about extension tubes. Extension tubes are specialty devices in macro photography that allow you to focus in closer than you would normally be able to with any type of lens, and it can increase your reproduction ratio and make the subject appear more detailed and more close up. Extension tubes are essentially just a way of moving the lens and the refracting glass pieces that allow the lens to focus further away from your processor, which thus makes you move closer to the subject. The extension tubes themselves are completely hollow. As you may be able to see, I can stick my finger right through it, there's no glass element inside. However, just because this is somewhat low technology does not mean that there are no complications and that these extension tubes are necessarily cheap. In this video, I'm going to be going over the different types of extension tubes that I own, reviewing them, and hopefully giving you a nice buying guide, and maybe we'll even discuss how to use the extension tubes well, and what to expect if you should buy them or if you already are using them. Hope this video is helpful. Here we go. Extension tubes allow you to focus closer by moving the refracting glass of your lens farther away from your processor, which allows for the camera to take in-focus pictures closer to the subject matter. Uh, most lenses have limitations, for example, this is the kit lens, as you can see, uh, I mean, the glass can move so far away with the focus ring, but it doesn't really change all that much, and that's fine and dandy if you're going from infinity focus to within, like, three feet, but beyond that, you're not going to really be able to do that much. So you can get around this with the use of extension tubes. So let's start right off. These are extension tubes uh, made by Kenco. The Kenco extension tubes are some of the most popular extension tubes on the market, uh, for their superior build quality and because of their ability to carry through EXIF data and electronic commands to your lens. These are higher end products. These cost me about $125 and you can expect the same if not more. Uh, but it might be worth that price. You can see that there are electrical connections down here and also at the top right there to transfer the signals from your camera body to the camera's lens. This means that you'll be able to transfer over autofocus capabilities if your camera would normally autofocus with the lens and EXIF data, which means that you will be able to control the aperture of your lens from the camera body by using these tubes. You don't need to have a manual aperture shift ring and the aperture will show up in the EXIF info which will de describe how your picture was taken. Uh, what I mean by being able to control the aperture of the lens is that uh, when you're just looking for you the, through the viewfinder and you're not taking a picture, uh, your aperture will remain wide open. But as soon as you take your lens off your camera, as you may be able to see right here, it gets very, very small. Uh, this is to prevent dust from getting in your lens. When you actually take the picture and it's on the camera, it's wide open. As soon as you take the picture, it steps down to the level that you want and then opens up again. So you have the viewfinder connection. So uh, you can see through the viewfinder better and you can focus more. And that only happens if you have the electronic connections in the Kenko tubes that control this lever to open and close the aperture. So that's important. Electronic connections give you EXIF data and allow you to control the aperture from the camera and allow you to see through the viewfinder easily. Uh, but, I mean, you got to pay $125 for those. So it's really your call. The alternative is something along the lines of this. This is a photodiox extension tube. Uh, they have the exact same dimensions as the Kenko ones, except these were only $10, and they didn't come with any lens caps or anything of that sort, so, I mean, you get what you pay for. It's, uh, some metal, mostly plastic, but I would trust it to hold most lenses as long as they don't need a tripod normally. It's pretty durable. Um, however, you're going to need a lens that you can manually change the aperture on. That means that it'll have a specific ring right next to the focal ring, or somewhere on the lens with the aperture values, and you can step them up and down from there, because there's no electronical connection here, or anything that would otherwise tell the lever that I mentioned earlier, right here, to open or close. This is an especially problem on Nikon, because whenever a lens is off the camera, it stops down to its maximum F value. In this case, on my macro lens, that's F57, which means I basically am not able to take pictures because no light gets into the camera. So, you really pay a price for this. You're going to need a specialty lens that can adjust the aperture already and has a decent focusing distance. 
but it's ten dollars so it's really your call either way the optics of the camera are not affected seeing as there are no glass pieces and it just increases the focus distance that's on any lens so I could use my dedicated macro lens or I could just see how my telephoto goes or the kit lens it's anything you want but remember as you move your lens further away from your processor and the opening of your lens further away uh, it's harder and harder for light to get into your camera and that means that you're going to need more light sources you could use a flash ring or something, but it's you need serious, serious amounts of light at the end of it. Also, the, fo the closer in you focus to your subject, the shallower the depth of field gets. So you might need to be using apertures of 11 or 16, uh, or very, very high apertures. So you're going to want to uh, be able to get a lot of light in your lens, and that is very tough, especially when you cannot control the aperture from your lens. So I would personally recommend the Kenkos, even though... I do have one fault with them. This ring will uh, always move without, like, this locking device no longer works. I can just untwist it instead of having to press down this lock and then move. So, I mean, one of them is not quite as secure, but it's still no big issue for me. And I haven't dropped them or anything. I'm not sure why this malfunction has occurred. I would still recommend the Kenkos. I think they're worth the money. Uh, and extension tubes are great if you're really looking to get serious about your macro photography and get really, really up close to your subject. Uh, be patient though, as with everything in macro photography, focus is near impossible, it's really tough, and it takes a lot of practice. So, uh, go out and explore. I mean, I don't necessarily recommend going and grabbing these just because you'll be disappointed, and it might keep you from uh, exploring further into macro photography. But if you really know what you're doing, you already have a lens that can adjust the aperture manually, it's worth a shot. So, uh, this has been Connor from Avid Visions, and good luck. Happy, happy photographying. -ing.